everybody this is Jean here coming from a beautiful sunny Pennsylvania it is glorious out this morning it's absolutely wonderful um, the Sun is shining we've had some crazy weather but it's just absolutely beautiful uh, this morning we had a zoom meeting um, with all the members of our congregation and we did some letter writing um, to our neighbors and just try to um, encourage people to keep their spirits up in this uh, t time of this pandemic it's been really um, tough on a lot of people. We're taking, as I've always said, one day at a time, counting our blessings um, and trying to keep positive. Um, but what, and I've been coming into my sewing room again, as you know, I have a hobby, my sewing, my quilting. And um, I usually start with having made my project, if you're following me. I show you my finished project and then I'll take you through my quite lengthy tutorial. I don't think this one's going to be so lengthy. <laughs> I'll try. Um, but um, this week is a little bit different because I wanted to just sort of back up to what I've done and what I'm going to be doing. And this is my tutorial here. Um, oh, actually, this is my tutorial. I have made, I will have made five fabric boxes. Actually, I was looking on YouTube. These are a dime a dozen, the tutorials, and they do them in like six minutes. I'm not going to do mine in six minutes. I'm going to take it step by step, whatever. But what I, what I was wanting to do, I needed a little bit more storage, <laughs> my massive, huge sewing room. Um, and I had seen these, and I thought, oh, that looks a really sweet little project. So what it is, as you can see, there's a large, sort of an extra large, a large, a medium, a small, and an extra small. Um, little fabric boxes, little baskets, boxes, and this is this is the one. I have done this in a batik. I, I sought out my batik fabric. As you know, I don't love batiks, but I have a lot of them. And then I put a um, just a, a white, uh, just a polka dot fabric band on the top, which is the lining. Very very simple to make. However, they take. You think, oh, this little basket it takes quite a lot of fabric, and it takes. What I use, quite a lot of um, a stiffening interfacing. It really does. So I'm thinking, well, I guess you could do it with scraps, but like it does take a lot of fabric. And I'm going to show you what I've actually done. This tutorial to follow is I'm using this fabric here. And it's a lovely sort of a mottled tie-dyed looking batik with the bright green or bluey green dot on the top. And that's going to fit right in here. That's going to slot right in here. These can be used, I'm telling you, for a multitude of, of, of uses. Um, the large one, I have a ton of patterns in there. This one, I have 10-inch squares. Look at that. The whole thing is filled with 10-inch squares. Layer cakes, perfectly for that because I have a lot of pre-cuts. This one, I because I had done some, well, I've done over the years a lot of pattern dressmaking, dressmaking um, patterns. That one fits perfectly for that, quite a lot of patterns. This one, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to put in. Maybe some charm skirts, but I'll show you at the end what I'll, I'll do with this one. And this one, I have a lot of thread, um, just some of, my, some of my white thread stuck in there. But I think the last tutorial I did for my, uh, was it my tote bag? Was it my tote bag? I forget what I was doing or something. I had found a, um, I had found a, we had, bought a generator and I got a lovely bit of cardboard. Quite a few people laugh because they're like, oh, I like cardboard too. I like cardboard. And I said, that's the hoarder in me, right? But interesting, I actually made patterns. I actually made pattern pieces from my cards because I think I'm going to do this again. These little tote boxes or baskets, they nest, one, the five of them, if you would make, they nest one inside of each other. And what a nice present for a baby shower because this larger one could hold um, like a blanket or baby clothes. This one could hold diapers, um, all sorts of wipes uh, down to, you know, pacifiers, things like that. All of your baby things lined up for, for a, a new mother, even if they didn't have, you know, even if it's a, you know, they, they're just struggling or starting out on the floor to organize things. What a nice present for a baby shower gift or to put things in them. Because, again, they nest. You can put plants in these. Um, again, like you maybe want to put a plate on the bottom. But, like, all sorts of, all sorts of different um, ways to use them. You can put scarves and cosmetics. 
all, like a lot of different storage options for these. Now again, I use the cardboard because I'm going to be making these again, as I just said. I've, I've cut out the, the, and I'll show you a close up. Um, this is the one I'm going to be making. This is a 13, this is a 13 inch square. This was a 13 inch square. And then I tell you how I cut out. I'm going to give you the measurements. I cut out a three inch square at the bottom. All you're doing is having a, a square. But you need two, two pieces of fabric, two pieces of lining, and two pieces of interfacing. So it gets a little bit, a lot of, a lot of material. Um, so this one, but you can obviously, the, the, uh, the first three, one, two, three, you can actually use two fat quarters. I was thinking if you had extra leftover blocks, like orphan blocks from a project, you could do that, put a border around it, and the, 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 your um, options are endless to use it up, to use up your um, fabrics, if you have any. Again, this is a, an 11 by 11 inch square that made this little one right here. And it's, they're, they're very super easy, and I'm going to show you how to do it. But you're not limited. Again, you could have buttons on here. You could put rickrack on there. You could, you could embellish these. You could put lace. I mean, you could really do an awfully lot to, to make these really pop to whatever decor um, you would want to do. So, as I said, these are my patterns. Um, they step up. This is a 15 and a half inch by 15 and a half inch. I mean, 15 inch by 15 inch. That one's is a 17 inch by 17, and then you cut out. And then the large one, you need two pieces, 21 inches square, with a five, a five inch cut out corner. And again, I had my cardboard. I like my cardboard, so I made these patterns because what I had done, and I'll show you what I had done is um, I cut out, I cut out my interface. I've already cut out my interfacing for this one because um, I was I had it out, but I cut out both of the when I go to do this. I will show you. I cut out both both of the lining and the uh, fabric together. I just I just put it together, put them together, and then cut them out. Um, and I will show you that I do it sort of right, uh, the, wrong, the right sides together. So when you go to sew it, it's, you actually have the exact, I'll show you, the exact way to, to uh, put it together. And then it's just a matter of putting the interfacing on and boxing the corners and putting the lining in. It's a really nice little tutorial, and I hope you love them. I think these are so super. So at the end of this tutorial, I will be showing you my finished, I'll, I'll have put it in there. I slotted it in there. Um, this is the other side. My computer's over here. This is the other side of my um, my sewing room. My fabric wall is here. I usually film there. Um, but this is this is my little shelf here. And um, as I was saying, I loved my batiks um, and I, for this project. But I coupled them. I, I I I made it real happy with the polka dot fabric. So I have a lot of polka dot fabric. So anyway, um, oh there's <laughs> come say hello. Come say hello. No, Max, Maxwell, Maxwell is just there. He doesn't want to say hello. But he says hello. Um, and Ian, we're going to be going out today. As I said, it's absolutely glorious. Just wanted to tell you, um, for the first time on Thursday, I went out of the house. Maxwell and I went to um, a supermarket close by. It's an expensive supermarket. I usually go to a cheaper one or Walmart, but that's a, a little bit of a way now. And I just... I gloved up, I suited up, I masked up, and I haven't been out. And it was a bit surreal. I mean, it was like, you know, we went into the parking lot, um, and we went in, there's a person with a clicker to telling how many people are allowed in the store, of course, six foot apart. And then in the store, oh, a, a woman, a girl did come out and wipe the card off. It was very, very good um, with, you know, antiseptic, Although she said, oh, I had wiped them before. She did it again. And then there's all one-way signs. <laughs> one-way, like, you know, you have to go down this one. And at one point, I went up the wrong aisle. And Maxwell, and there was a person. And Maxwell's like, we're in the wrong, we're going the wrong way. I'm thinking, oh, this is stressful. And my husband has been doing small shops. And our children have been doing small shops for me. It was my first time. I thought, six weeks. I have to do, I have to do my shop, right? So I did a decent shop, and um, we came out, and I was exhausted. 
and I had my mask, I've been making a million masks for our family and for friends and donating them to nursing homes. I may, I had my mask, I got in the car, I ripped that mask off because I tend to get a bit claustrophobic and I had to take the mask off. I'm like, oh my word, these poor people have to work on these things eight hours a day. Like, it was about 40 minutes and I was, I was shattered. I was shattered and again, I know quite a lot of people are out doing, um, but I have physically literally been at home and man, I thought, just a food shop. I was exhausted the rest of the day, emotionally and mentally and physically. It just drained me. So and I was I was happy to come home. I got everything. What I was saying, it was a little bit more expensive. I didn't even look at prices. Not that we're rich at all, at all. But I thought, I'm just going to get this because the shelves were not empty. But of course, there was no flour. There was no... Um, there was no hair color, <laughs> the, the important things, right? It was funny, yeast people, what, 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 and there was no toilet paper, except a certain brand. I won't, na I won't name that brand. A whole bunch of them, which I don't, we don't like that brand of toilet paper. There was a whole bunch of them, I guess other people don't like that toilet paper. That was funny. I, we just had a laugh about that. But if worse comes to worse, I should have bought a case, right? And um, anyway, so that was that. I had my little foray into the world, and I'm thinking, oh, I'm safer at home. Man, that was exhausting. That was exhausting. So again, this is a surreal, a surreal, unreal, stressful time. I'm trying to stay calm though. And I'm making my little totes. I'm making my little baskets. So hopefully um, you'll enjoy my tutorial to come. And um, again, stay safe. Oh, another one thing. I, we, I will put it up because it was so very sweet. Yesterday, my husband and I celebrated our 39th wedding anniversary. And because we can't see our children, I'm going to put pictures up. They, we got, there was a uh, doorbell rang and our daughter and our son-in-law were, were in the car and they had put on the steps our present. And it was a, it, I'll take a picture of it. It was a photograph that they photo, they photoshopped it all together. They got all of our 10 children together. 15 of our 16 grandchildren because one couldn't make it all together and with their arms <laughs> they made a heart as you will see on the picture it was so all in their different locations because we're all social distancing right it was so it was the best present ever it really really was all of our babies and um, they they live close by but two two live about an hour away but everybody else lives close by it was the best anniversary present ever. Plus a thing of chocolate covered strawberries oh, and a big thing of chocolate. It was just a, it was just so absolutely wonderful. So I'll take a picture of that. That was a special, special 39th anniversary. 39 years. Oh my word. Oh my word. And I'm only 39. <laughs> yeah, I wish. Anyway, on to my tutorial. Hope you love them. And I will be back to show you my finished project. All right. See you. To make my little bucket bags and my little baskets, um, as I was showing you, I have made my cardboard patterns because I will be making these again. Now, um, you saw my, it, uh, uh, basically it's, it's extra small, what I'm doing, extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large. And if you wanted to write this down, the small bucket bag, the small bag is an 11 by 11 inch square and it has two and a half inch cutouts, two and a half inch on either side. 
that's the small the oh that's the extra small the small is a 13 inch square with three inch cutouts on each side the medium is a 15 inch by 15 inch square with three and a half inch cutouts the large is a 17 inch by 17 inch square with four inch cutouts at the bottom and the extra large which you saw in the beginning makes that size is a 21 inch by 21 inch square with five inch cutout bottoms now what i've done is i've made them all except and i'll put these to the side i've made them all except my 13 and 13 inch by 13 inch so this would require if you were going to be using two fat quarters this would be ideal i had just grabbed um a, i believe this is about half a yard but that's okay a fabric of this of this sort of tie-dye batik and my my dots now what i'm going to do this is this is how it's come off the bolt obviously okay oh excuse me i'm going to go answer my phone sorry about that had to answer my phone so this is how the my, my material has come off my bolt but what i'm going to do is i'm going to just turn this and sort of with a batik you don't have a right or wrong but i think i'm going to have the right or wrong side i'm going to put this together I sort of square it up, make sure it's nice and nice and uh, the grain is all going one way like that. I'm going to turn it the right sides together. The right sides are together. This is just how I do some things sometimes because when you're going to sew right sides together, I like to cut out sometimes right sides together. And again, here's my right side. So I'm just going to turn that and going to put that those right sides together also for this one of my and the, the my fold is down here my fold is down here I'm just going to put my fold right down there this is I got again this is so 13 inches but I think that I just grabbed these were my half yard pieces or something so there's my fold down there it doesn't really matter I have already cut out um, as I was cutting out my other inner facings, I've already cut out this piece here of my, um, I'm using a Pellon stiffer non-woven inner facing. It's very stiff. I'll show you a trick when it comes to fusing this on. This is a stiff one. You could use a, a fusible batting if you wanted to, but I quite, or you could use the flex foam um, to make your bags really nice and stiff or a hand make, a handbag making material to make your bags real stiff. But for this, for these, as you can see, my bag stood up beautifully. I used this fusible on one side a uh, non-woven interfacing quite stiff a Pellon product now here is my pattern my 13 inch by 13 inch pattern and what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to take my ruler here and because I made it out of cardboard um, I I'm going to put my ruler right I'm just about a, a hair over the cardboard because I don't want to really slice off my cardboard just with my just with my I'm just just cut that off there just cut that off and then I'm just going to shift this around keeping off four keeping off four um, layers in, in order there and again, so I don't, you, you, you can use a paper pattern if you want, but I find I'm just going to use my, I'm just going to use my, um, my cardboard. Oh, because I like my cardboard, <laughs> right? <laughs> and then what I'm going to do here for my corners, I'm just going to do that, do that. I am going to cut out my corners with my, um, with my scissors, but I'll show you. So easy. So, so, so very, very simple here. Oh, I think I need a sharper blade. And then I'll just turn this here. I mean, again, this isn't rocket science. This is an easy project. However comfortable you are cutting out your pattern, you can measure it if you wanted to, a 13-inch square with a ruler you might have. Um, but this is the way I did it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get... Excuse me, I should have thought about this ahead of time. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I have, I just have a, um, I have a, 
uh, Sharpie here. That's fine. Never going to see it. And I'm going to take my Sharpie and I'm just going to, on that three inch corner, remember this is a 13 and a half, this is a, why do I keep saying 13 and a half? This is a 13 inch square. And then on a three inch corner, I'm just going to take my nice sharp scissors and I'm going to cut all four pieces. And then when I go to sew them together, I know my bits are exactly the same size. Do you know, did you, you ever, did you ever like cut something out and you're thinking, oh, I did that perfectly. And then you go to turn, you know, and you've, you've done it wrong sides together, you know, as off the bolt. And then you go to do it and it's sort of, it doesn't sort of match up because it's not absolutely perfect. But if you do it this way, when we go to sew our lining together, you just have to take it to your iron, to your machine and they're perfectly together. When we go and sew this together, the right sides are perfectly they're next to each other. And so our, our pieces are exactly the same. Now what I'm going to do is on the wrong side, this is the wrong side. Remember, this is the wrong side of the fabric. The pretty side, the pretty side is to, in, you can't really tell, but the pretty side is in the inside. If you're not using a batik. Now what I'm going to do, now this probably won't fit as well. Yeah, just a little bit. Again, isn't that funny? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my ironing board and this is the shiny side. That's the glued side. I'm going to start ironing this piece down. And again, it's a little bit big, so I'm going to trim this off. I'm going to just trim this off a little bit. This doesn't have to obviously be exact. Um, you're just You're just going to be ironing this piece down here on each side I'll show you how I do it shiny side glue oops here's it glue side down onto my oops no no that's the shiny side <laughs> I'm getting all confused here shiny side down so we have two two pieces that we're going to be ironing the our fabric to and I'll go over to my ironing board and show you what I do so here I am at my ironing board and what I've done before is when I have a piece of this interfacing here, um, which is a non-woven product, sometimes when you hit this with a hot iron, it's going to wrinkle up. So what you can do is you, I prefer ironing on the, the right side of the fabric. Or what I'm also going to do when I have a bit of a larger piece, what I do is I get a pressing cloth. Now this literally is I just line that up, my, my interfacing. This literally is a hunk of muslin that I've just cut. You can use anything, piece of old cotton, a handkerchief, anything for a pressing cloth. And that way I can iron and I can see that my interfacing is all lined up on the, the wrong side of my fabric, and I, but I'm not touching the interfacing itself. My iron is not touching any kind of adhesive. If, if there was adhesive to be gotten on. And any of you who you have fused anything know that it inevitably the, the, the glue on the back of the interfacing that is melting now into the fabric sometimes gets on your either, sometimes it gets on your, your cutting, your uh, ironing board, and then, and maybe this will a little bit, but I don't like to get it on my ironing plate the sole of my iron. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start it out with my pressing cloth. And what I'm doing is, of course, this is, again, this is uh, for, for beginners. If you haven't ever used this product, we're fusing the interfacing to the fabric. Now, it hasn't fused very well, but because it takes a long time and the, I think the manufacturers, you can hold this on, this iron on for like 12 to 15 seconds. But if you were doing that perhaps on a lighter color fabric, you might burn your, you might get a scorch mark. You have to be very careful. So that's why I like to use my pressing cloth to begin with, just to sort of try to adhere. And then what I'm doing is I know pretty much that that's tacked on to the, the back of my fabric pretty much tacked on, but then, oops, it sort of comes up, it's not quite adhered. So now, because this is a darker fabric, I'm just going to hold it on there. And I'm just going to hold this iron on for quite a while, and I'm going to fuse this on. So it, 
So I always say, it sounds like really hippy dippy, but I always say you want your interfacing to become one with your fabric. You don't want, you, you really want that glue to melt um, at, because you want this, you don't want it to separate when you're working with your project. And it could look a little bit bumpy and lumpy if it does separate. So the, the longer you take in this pre preparatory or preparation step, the better your project is going to turn out. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to fuse both of my pieces together really well. I'm at my machine and I have fused together my stiffening interfacing onto the, the, the back, the wrong side of my fabric. And, and I have my lining fabric here. And if you're making handbags or anything simple like this, this project, I highly recommend that you cut, just like I did, you cut with the right, the, the right sides together because that's how you're going to be sewing. So, oh, I have white thread. Ah, that's all right. Um, so now I'm going to be sewing this about a, about a half an inch, not a quarter of an inch. Just going to go down the side here. About a half an inch seam, right down the side and then backstitch. Now a lot of people when they do, when they, um, I was watching some tutorials, they actually now attach their threads. Don't cut the thread. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Because what I wanna do is you're gonna sew down this seam and you're gonna sew down this one. So I won't cut that. Let's see how that works out. Yeah, okay. Because we're just gonna be attaching this to make the, ba the box bottom. So I uh, backstitch there. Press her foot up, pull that thread out, and then just continue. Yeah, okay, that's cool. And as you can see, especially with the batik, it's not going anywhere because it's a stiffer, it's a stiffer woven fabric anyway. And like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue making the bag. What we're going to do is we're going to take these corners here with this thread. I don't know. Let me get rid of that. Is there a purpose for that thread? I don't know. I'll have to watch some other tutorials. <laughs> anyway, so now what we're going to do is we're, we're just going to box the corners. And because it's cut perfectly here at this angle, we're going to separate the two layers. And I'm going to, it's very stiff actually with the, the, the stiffening and the um, batik. I'm just going to finger press this seam open here. Just going to finger press that. And with the stiffening interfacing in the batik, it, it presses quite nice. Just going to open this up and finger press that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of mess about where there's no tucks or anything behind here. Just pull out this corner and you're going to match up the seams. They match up beautifully to that end there raw edges together and to that end there where we've cut it. Make sure you don't have any tucks. Now you can pin this or put clips on it, but I'm just going to pull this back. Make sure I have no tucks. There's a little pleat there. Pull that out. Make sure I'm not pinching the bottom anywhere. And then I'm just going to sew again about half an inch. Those corners are matched together beautifully. I'm just going to backstitch over my seam there. Pull this out. Make sure, there you go. It's nice and flat and backstitch. Now you know me, I usually, I usually would go back and reinforce, reinforce. I'm not... I'm fine with reinforcing the back end of that. That's fine. And now I'm going to do the same exact thing here. I've I finger press that seam, and then I'm just going to finger press this seam. And then I'm going to match these two seams together. There's one seam, and there's another seam. Open that one. There. And then pull it out. 
I back stitch over my seam and then right off. Now I'm going to turn that inside out and go over to my iron, but what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to grab my, uh, my, my lining and again, I've cut it and it's perfect. Like I'm just going to, the exact same size, I'm just going to about half an inch, making sure my raw ends are together. And it sits down one side, but I'm going to go down about four inches and I'm going to stop and I'm going to back stitch. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my needle down. What I'm going to do is I'm leaving an opening on this side. All right. So I've gone down four inches, needle down. I'm going to turn my fabric and I'm going to go off right to the edge and back stitch. The reason I'm doing that is we have an opening here, correct? We have an opening. And we're going to be pulling out this big hunk of stiffened, batiked uh, bag through this opening. And if any of you know, I've, I've addressed this before, but this, if you just backstitch, that can get sort of stressed and sort of get a bit messed up. Even if it's on the inside, it's okay. But this really does help you have a nice turning because the stress is now taken up here as opposed to there. So I'm going to leave another about three inch opening and I'm going to start that side to about half an inch. Go back a couple times, needle down, press your foot up and go off the end of my seam. That's our opening for our turning. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing here as we did on my bag, I'm just going to stitch that along about half an inch. And then, oh, I, I am clipping the threads. Look, I, I, those the, when I kept the thread there, I'm clipping these threads. I like to clip threads. And people are like, don't you have an automatic clipper, a cutter? And I'm like, yeah, I do, but I don't like to use it. Can't teach an old dog new tricks. It takes me two seconds. So now I'm just going to come back up here and backstitch. Now, I'm going to do the exact same thing as we did on our bag, right? I'm just going to box the corners of my lining. And this is easier because there's no stiffening. What you want to do is you just want to open up this seam here. By all means, if you want to, if you want to clip this, if you want to pin it, that would be wise. Should I be wise? Yeah, okay. Let me be wise. I'll pin this. <laughs> You know I don't like to use pins. Oops. Yeah, see, I got all screwed up. But I'll use pins here on this one and this one. Keep these seams open. Pull this out to the degree. Fiddle about there so you don't get any tucks or folds. There you go. About half an inch. Pull that out. Again, this is easier than the bag itself. Don't want to go over any, don't want to go over your pins, and there you go. And then I'll do the exact same thing on the other side. Oh, where the heck is it? Where is it? Oh, 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 it's over here. <laughs> there you go. So here it is. So I'll open up this seam, and I'll open up that seam finger press it and match that up put my pins in for you pin people pull that out make sure you don't have any tucks at the back there Now we have two two pieces exactly pretty much exactly the same now I'm going to go over to my ironing board and show you how I'm going to iron these seams now I don't know um, if you guys obviously your seamstresses have seen what this is this is called a tailor's 
ham. I've had this Taylor's ham, I think, for 40 years. <laughs> it was, I think it was my grandmother's at the time. She, um, yeah, look at this. It's, it's a Dritz. I think you can still get these. I think, I, I think they're a little bit smaller. This is a real Taylor's ham. This has a woolen side over here. It's like a woolen plaid here. And then this is just like a cotton muslin. And I was told, I don't know if this is true, that the woolen side is for like a uh, lower, lower, uh, lower temperature iron, and then the cotton is for a high temperature iron. I don't know. I've, I've, I've sewn, I've, I've used this for dressmaking, but for this, I pulled this out because I thought this was a little bit awkward to try to press and to get, keep it nice. So what I did is I'm like, oh, I got my tailor's hand out. I stick this in here. This is basically a dressmaking tool for, um, uh, put it on this way, for, for sewing, for pressing curved seams. Now, as you can see, look at that. Look how nice that that is going to press. Now, I have to be very careful what I'm going to do, especially now, because I remember what I was saying with our interfacing. It's very, I could just do that. This would start to wrinkle up. I'm going to use this little product here, my little hunk of fabric, and I'm going to press that seam right on that tailor's ham. You don't need it. Of course you don't need it. I mean, oh my goodness, you don't need this. But it makes it really easy for projects. And I find if you're going to be making bags or little boxes or handbags or wallets, that this little product is a nice, it's nice. I think you can still buy them. Obviously you can buy them um, at, the, at a, at a um, hobby store. They may not be as big. I'm not quite sure because this one is a, a honking big one. It was my grandmom's and it was my step-grandmother's. We used to call her Aunt Clara. She was a sweetheart. She taught me how to sew um, I, or she showed me when I was young. And then I, when I went into home ec class in um, seventh grade, um, I had a teacher who really, really sh showed me how to sew. Now, I'm not even going to try to... Um, um, iron this this bottom seam here or these obviously I'm just going to now turn this inside out or right side out I should say and again you can feel you can hear how stiff this bag is with the stiffening and of course or the basket or whatever your box or whatever you call this and obviously that's what you want to have you want to poke out those points there poke out our bits our, our bottom there and again, you can hear how nice and stiff this is. And there, just like that, is the makings of our bag. Of course, with the side seams to, to, the, to there. Right? Okay? Now, and again, if you want to just stick this in here and press on the outside, it's just, it's just lovely. You're not going to get any nasty folds if you had to do it. Again. You don't need this, but I think it, I pulled it out because I was making some bags and totes and it's a nice little handy object to have. Again, my, my lining, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to stick it in there and you can see how, look at how that opens up just like that. Of course, now I don't need my pressing cloth. I can just press that right up there. Turn it around. And again, it's on the plaid side. That's fine. Now, this is the side where we left our opening, okay? Now, I'm going to press it with my opening. I'm going to open the seam up, and I'm just going to press that as opened as I can. Right there, up to the stitching, and then right there. Because when we go to close this, there's that opening. When we go to close our seam after we've pulled our bag through, we can have a nice, sturdy seam just to press it, just to iron closed. And again, there we go. So now, very simple, what I'm going to do, am I in the frame? Yeah, let me just see here. Yeah, so now what I'm going to do is I have my, my lining with the, I haven't turned it inside out. I've t just as we came off the cutting table, just as we came off of the, off of the sewing machine, I have my bag side seams out there with the pretty side inside. I'm going to take my outer basket with the outside, with the right side out, and I'm just going to stick it in, in, inside like that. And I'm going to match up, I'm going to match up the side seams. 
And because we've cut it exact and because we've sewn it exact, hopefully <laughs> it's going to be exact. Just going to line up the bottom and line up the top there. Line up the side seams. Oops, I'm a little bit off there. Take our side seams and shift this. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to line up my side seams. One's there. You get the idea. I have to, I have to mess about with it. Line up my side seams there and there. And this I will use clips. It does fit. It doesn't look like it fits. It fits. I have to mess about with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and I'm going to clip this together. Side seams matched right there like that. Side seams matched. And I'm going to clip it and then I'm going to sew it right along the top edge at about half an inch. So as you can see, I've stitched right along the edge of the top edge here. And the, the pieces fit together really well. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my side seam that has our opening, which is right there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to sort of grab my bag and I'm going to really crunch it in, inside. I'm really going to crunch it with my hand. I'm really going to squish that with my hand. Grab a handful of just bag, obviously. Really make it small to allow the least bit of, of stress on our seam, even though as I, even though we made it that, that it's 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 not going to rip, but it's still a lot of stress. But if you grab it and then you turn it, it turns really easy. You see that if you grab that like that, that's just a little trick. Now again, I'm going to find my side seams, which are there and there, and I'm just going to I'm just going to um sort of, I want to, I want to flat, I'm going to pull this out. I just want to press this seam here that we've just stitched. There's my side seams. Just want to press that like that. Again, we don't need our, we don't need our cloth. Now, before I turn this inside out and our bag is finished, what I am going to do is I'm just going to go over. Here's my opening. And as you can see, there's no stress on that opening. It just turns beautifully. You see that? It just turns beautifully. Just like that. It turns beautifully. I'm going to go over. It's already ironed down. And what you could do here is you could do a you could do a um you could do a blind stitch on that opening if you wished, but I'm just going to stitch it right down with a with a um um a little tiny stitch right close to the edge, an eighth of an inch to close up that opening. So I've stitched my opening closed, <laughs> and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this and I'm going to sh shove it inside. I'm going to take my lining and I'm going to match up the bottom of the lining to the bottom of our bag. And as you can see, the lining, because of the seam, wants to go like that. But what, what I do is I do turn it in. I do turn it in because we want the lining the exact same size of the bag. So I'm just going to keep turning it in and turning it in. We are going to turn this edge over, as you saw on, in the beginning. I'm just going to iron that lining, just sort of so it's just so it's um, the same, pretty much, pretty much the same as the bag. So I'm just going to do that. So here is my bag with the lining all lovely and tucked in. And this one, I, I didn't use this. I just went inside. I went inside my bag, the, the lining is nice and straight on that top seam there. Just going inside, put my iron in there like that. And then it's all done. These are my side seams here. They're my side seams. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to carefully just turn the top edge over. You don't have to if you don't want to, but just to have this pretty lining show, I'm going to turn that top edge over. It's nice and stiff. As you saw, it's nice and stiff. And there, that makes the most beautiful bag, box, basket, whatever the heck you want to call it. With And this one, here's my side seams there, but because it has a wide bottom, it makes like a box shaped, an open box basket shape. And there is my lovely, this, this batik, my lovely bag.
my lovely box. You can turn this down as much as you wanted. And again, you're, you're not limited. You could put buttons on there. You could have attached a lace around there or a rickrack. You could put a beautiful applique on here. You're, you're not limited at all. So I'm going to figure out, I might, I might actually um, fill this with some clips that I have. Um, where, where are those? Oh yes, here. I was thinking about it. I use, I use these clips. Not, not all of them, of course. I use these clips a lot. I use these, oops, falling off. I use these a lot for when I go to um, hold my quilt up or when I go to photograph my quilt. It like, these things are incredible. They're a couple dollars. I have all sizes here. Um, so I, I, I use these a lot. I use the smaller ones to, to hold things together. So I just have them in this, in this bag here. Um, I have these ones which are which are unbelievable. These I can hardly open up. But like when I go to photograph a quilt, I put this over a, a fence panel and it hangs fantastic. The, my my clips. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some of these clips that I use quite a lot. I have little small ones. I have small. Ones. They they're you, you you they're wonderful. And then if my husband needs them for plumbing or something, I have them. So I want I can't put I can't put them all in. But I'll just put a few of them in from my bag here. And I'm not, I'm assured because my bag is sturdy that it's not going to realize. Maybe I will be able to get them all in. Probably not. I don't need them all. But anyway, so that is what I'm going to put in my little, my little bag basket here. There. And that, you can see, that's not going to, that's not going to rip. That's not going to. That's sturdy as anything, and that's quite a lot of, um, pr you know, stuff in there. So there is my little bag. I'll take a picture of them all together, all uh, five of them. And um, yeah, I hope you, I hope you absolutely love this little project. And again, thank you for, thank you for following along. I hope you make them, and if you do, tell me what you're using them for because um, I think they're super. All right, folks. Thanks. See ya.